Hi there, it's Bonnie with So Inspired by Bonnie with another Tuesday's Tip. Go ahead and give me a shout out or a hey or some love so that I know you're here. And I will refresh my computer so that I can see you. Making a comment is the only way that I know that you're actually here. Um, what we're going to discuss today is some holiday fun with canisters and buckets. And I kind of thought of this idea a while ago and I've been wanting to try it. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I just now got around to it. I wanted a way to kind of decorate in the house without having decorations that took up a lot of room and space. And so this is sort of what I came up with, with the canisters, because you can change them out for the seasons or the holidays. Um, I think they'll have a lot of good uh, uses. I, I was even thinking you could use them for dog treats or, you know, cookies. I mean, I could see you just having the word cookies or maybe some cookies on the front. Just a whole bunch of different ideas. Okay, I see lots of you showing up. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Sandy. Now, as you know, what how we normally do this is I'll go through the little spiel, and then at the end, I'll answer any questions because I can't talk and type at the same time. I'm not that talented. <laughs> so, anyway, um, be sure to share this information, the video, that is, with your friends if you think anybody can benefit from it. I would love for you to sign up for our newsletter to get information on sales and uh, sometimes we have exclusive special sales especially just for our newsletter friends and we also give away a couple of free designs when you sign up so you'll want to do that over at www.soinspiredbybonnie.com and that's s-e-w not s-o so anyway without any more hesitation and advertising uh, let's go ahead and get on with uh, today's Tuesday's tip. Um, now what I do is digitize and I have a lot and I mean a lot of test sews that I need to use up. But I still recommend you start with something a little bit bigger than your end result. It just makes it easier. So what I did was I started going through some of my test sews and they're generally about this size. So that's obviously a lot bigger than what I need, but it worked well for me. So I would recommend starting out with something a little bit bigger than what you need because when you embroider, just like with quilting, sometimes there's a little bit of drawing up on the fabric, maybe just a little hair at the top or the bottom. It's You'll need to true it up, is what I'm trying to say, after you uh, are done embroidering. No matter how good we are, sometimes there's a little bit of push and pull that goes on with the fabric during embroidery. So I always like to start with something a little bit bigger. Um, then what I did was I just simply quilted around my design uh, using the full amount. And then I measured my canister. Now, let me step back a little bit. When I was thinking about this, I was thinking, okay, what would be a good canister to use? I wanted something that was big enough where I could throw cookies in it or candy or whatever. So I needed a big canister, not a little teeny one. But you could do this on a smaller jar if that's what you wanted to you know, decorate up, maybe in a little gift basket or something, maybe with some soaps. I think it would be great, you know, some little... You know those powder soaps that uh, some people make um, that would be awesome but I wanted a big jar um, and I needed something that would actually fit about a five by seven design so that's another reason that I was going for a larger jar is I had a larger design to deal with and I found or I feel that the jars that are straight up and down the canisters rather that are straight up and down are the easiest to deal with and I wanted something quick and easy now your buckets are going to have a different shape a lot of them come down at the end and are wider at the top no problem you can still do that it's just not it just takes a little bit more time and you need to make your pattern first as opposed to just a straight up and down canister like this 
So what I did was I got my canister. Now these, you know, I just tied them so they'll easily store flat. I can just lift it, lift it right off of my canister and I can store it flat. Um, I could even untie it and, and store it flat that way too. You don't have to store it with the uh, bows still on it, obviously. But you just put it on and tie it. And what I did was I measured how big of an area I wanted on my canister. So I just used my trusty quilting ruler because it didn't flop around on me. And on this one, I saw that I this one goes up to about seven inches. And when I put the little design on it, I wanted a little wiggle room on top and bottom. And with the binding and everything, I wanted a, a band about six and a half inches tall. This is not heirloom sewing. It's not an exact science. If you fudge a little bit one way or the other, it's not going to make a bit of difference. So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't standing up above this indentation. I just wanted it down on the main part of the body of the canister. So that's how I got my uh, height. Then, for the width, of course, I took and I measured around. And this one is 27 and a half. This one was a different size, but you're going to measure around. So 27 and a half. And I didn't just divide it by two because I wanted just the front portion to be a little bit smaller. You'll see that my front portion is a little bit smaller than the back portion. Like that. So no big deal. I just kind of eyeballed. Now I already know how tall I want it, six and a half inches. You don't have to add seam allowances or anything like that. It's just, it's really easy. Um, and then I just kind of rolled this around and I thought, okay, um, this looks about right as far as what you're visually going to see is probably about, oh, five inches or so. Uh, maybe a little bit longer. I wound up with, with nine on mine, which, you know, wraps from end to end about here because I had some uh, negative space in there. I didn't, it wasn't all straight design is what I'm trying to say. So that allowed me a little bit for the quilting. And then I just went and quilted a back section for the pattern. Uh, so if I had nine inches for the front, what did I say the whole thing was? 27 and a half. So nine inches from 27 and a half leaves 18 and a half inches I have left to do on the back. But wait, what I wanted was a little gap between the front and back so that I could kind of see all the goodies that were in my jar. You can make that anywhere from one inch on either side. Actually, you can have it touching if you want it. It's, it's your jar. Um, to, um, oh, I guess like two or three inches on either side. So whatever you want as a gap, you're going to take that off of the back as well. So you have your 27 and a half inches minus the nine. We're down to 19 and a half. If I take off two on either side, that's another four off of the 19 and a half. So my back would then be uh, 15 and a half inches. Make sense? It's it's. They're just squares. They're not a fancy pattern. So what I wound up with was, now this is a little design from my Snow Buddy set. Um, he is nine, six and a half inches tall uh, by nine inches across. And then I quilted a back section that I said, what, 15 and a half uh, by the same height, six and a half inches tall. And then I put a binding on it. Let me go back. I tucked under first, before I put the binding on, I tucked under some ribbon. The ribbon is 12 to 15 inches long. And that really kind of depends on how much gap you have. But you're going to have plenty with 12 or 15 inches. You're going to need eight strips of ribbon, 12 to 15 inches long. And you'll tuck them under toward the top of your little panels. Then you're going to, and I did a video on attaching binding. I did a couple of vid videos on attaching binding, doing the, you know, joining and doing the miter corner. So you might look at some of the old videos if you need a refresher on that. 
But the only thing I did different, instead of starting on the front with my binding, because I wanted to do this project with no handwork whatsoever, is I started with the binding on the back and sewed it from the back, catching my ribbons, so I didn't have to hand sew those, and then flipping it to the front and top stitching my binding down on the front, folding it over as I've done in the previous videos. Doesn't matter if you stitch on the front and go to the back or stitch on the back and go to the front, you're still going to do your mitered corners in the same fashion. But I wanted to do no handwork. When I do handwork, I always add my binding to the top and do the handwork on the bottom. When I'm doing the binding by machine, I always put the binding on the back and go to the front so that I can see where I'm stitching so that I get a nice straighter line. Okay, so I had trouble at first getting these little guys on and trying to tie it and keep everything straight. And I don't know about you, but I always keep a uh, scotch tape. <laughs> That's what that stuff is. Scotch tape in my sewing room. And I thought, well, that makes sense. And then this particular jar had some side seams on it. Well, I didn't want those side seams to show on the little... Uh, exposed part so I just use the side seams as my front center front and center back and then I took my trusty little scotch tape and I kind of eyeballed what the center of my panel was it doesn't matter if you start with the front or the back panel um, but I just kind of got that tamed so that it was an extra set of hands for me because I was having trouble um, holding everybody in place and trying to tie bows and and <laughs> everything else that's involved <laughs> so I just went ahead and kind of scotch taped it on here and sort of eyeballed to make sure that the sides were about equal distance not one real close and the other one real far apart so having that scotch tape handy and just sort of taping that guy down uh, before you tie your bows really um, made a difference for me. It made it so much easier to have that extra set of hands basically on my jar. And then you're just going to tie your little bows however you want. Now the bottom ribbon is going to be cut shorter than the top ribbon. That's why I like to start with ribbon that's a little bit too long and I can kind of custom trim them up to the size that I want. And I'm kind of doing a quick job here so that, because uh, everybody knows how to tie a bow. Um, but I'm doing a quickie little job here. Not super duper fancy. But just so that you can get the idea. And if I wanted to change this out, you know, I wouldn't have to recreate the wheel and remeasure everything. I could just take out these little panels that I already made that fit, and I could measure those to make my next one. So the, the second one's always going to go faster than your first prototype. Um, so that's kind of kind of nice. And if you want to change something up, you always can. Again, this is just. This is just a fun little project. It's not anything to stress over that you want to get it perfect. And then once you have this tied, then you just can come in here and trim your little bows. I like to trim them at an angle, but it's whatever you want to do. See, I had plenty of extra here, and on the bottom it's even going to be uh, more so that I'll have extra. sort of gives you an idea of how how the sides will look once you kind of trim them up and then all you have to do is lift up your scotch tape and remove that it's pretty easy but that scotch tape comes in handy I use the scotch tape a lot for this project and you'll see why in a couple of minutes when we get to the buckets okay so 
I basically did the same with my little Snow Buddies guy as I did with the Spooky Buddies, which is also on our website. We have both design sets on the website. Um, I did the same thing with him as I did uh, with, with the Spooky Buddies in that I added some quilting around uh, just to kind of give it a, a nice little uh, texture, which I thought was sort of fun. That's all there is to it. it was, it's a quick, easy project. It stores really well, um, and you can change them up and redress them for any holiday or season, or maybe just you want to have cookies, like I said, on there, and uh, another purpose entirely. So those are the uh, canisters. Now, what do you do? Let me get this out of the way. When you're trying to do a bucket, now, some buckets are straight up and down, but most buckets have a curve to them. They're not just straight up and down. And if you were to do a straight up and down panel like we did there, you'd have a wider gap at the top and, an, and no gap or an overlap at the bottom. So what I did, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to have that fly in front of your face, is I... <laughs> got some regular freezer paper. I mean, just your standard freezer paper. You can get that anywhere. Um, I probably should tell you that I did find those because someone will ask. I did find the uh, glass canisters at Target. I'm sure you can find them at Walmart. Um, I've seen a few at Hobby Lobby, but I was specifically looking for a canister that kind of sealed at the top. Um, and both of these sort of seal at the top so that, um, you see it has a little seal, so that if I decide to store cookies in them, they'll stay fresh. Okay, so let's get on with the bucket. And I was looking at the bucket going, okay, how are we going to do this little guy? Well, I knew that I needed to roll him, and so I kind of did a little test roll, and I needed to double up my paper and make it a little bit extra wide. And so I got up the scotch tape and taped two halves together to make my paper wider. <clears throat> and then I was having trouble corralling this bucket because it wants to wiggle a lot. So I thought the less that I have to trace, the better. And so what I decided I would do is I would only trace half of it, fold my paper in half, and duplicate the two, the two halves to uh, make my pattern. So what I did was I got out some scotch tape and a little Sharpie marker, and this bucket has a seam on it, so I just took my scotch tape, and I like to fold over the end of my scotch tape before putting it on anything, so I have an easy release on the scotch tape when I'm done using it. If I don't do that, oh, that tape can hold down, and it's a booker to get off, isn't it? So I like to have like a little, make myself a little tab by folding over the tape before I put it on something like this where I'm going to be, where I know I'm going to be removing it. So I have my little tabs that aren't going to stick all the way down. And then I just folded my uh, scotch tape on top of the seam on the, see if you can see, there's a seam here on the bucket and you can see the seam on the inside. I put the scotch tape over that seam and then I took my magic marker and I drew a little line right on the scotch tape uh, for where that seam was. So I had a halfway mark. This side didn't have a seam so what I did was I went straight up from the handle because I knew the handle was on the other half and then went over and followed my mark and got my uh, halfway point at there at that section. So then what I did was I laid the halfway point on my bucket right on the edge of my freezer paper. I didn't start out in the middle of the freezer paper. I started right on the edge and kept my line straight so that I had a straight line to work from on the top and the bottom. And then I took a pencil and I drew with the pencil the bottom and the top and I rolled my bucket around until I got to the other 
halfway point and made a mark at the top and I made a mark at the bottom. And let me show you that. So I traced all the way around. I'm going to lift this up and hopefully you'll be able to see it. I traced all the way around, okay? And then at the end, I marked the top where the halfway point was and the bottom where the halfway point is. Now the top is bigger, so it's going to be the bigger arch. Then what I did was I took this and I folded it in half right on that line I drew. I drew a line from top to bottom where those two marks were. <clears throat> okay, now I can take my scissors and I can cut out on this line to create the entire pattern without having to roll all the way around because that handle was getting in the way and it was just being a pain in the fanny, to be honest. <laughs> so, get top and bottom. Oops, get under here. Okay, I'll let that fall there. And, okay, so this becomes your pattern for the bucket. See how that goes all the way around? Now I've got this little piece sticking up and I'll probably tape that down so that it's not getting away from me. I tell you, scotch tape is really handy to have in the sewing room. It's You might not need it for months and then all of a sudden you'll need it all the time on a project. Okay, so this is the pattern and remember the top is going to be the bigger portion of your pattern. So then, if I were to cover this with a panel, I'd kind of lay this pattern around it. I'd wrap it and just sort of see how it's doing. And I see that my pattern is a little bit too tall, which is no big deal, no problem at all. What I would do is I would trim that down, kind of custom fit it. I might tape it on there and kind of trim it down. And um, I also noticed that these handles come down, oh, well, it looks to be about a half inch, but I would measure it. It's about a half inch or so where the handle actually comes in. You could do one of two things. You could cut off the half inch or not worry about it and you're going to have the sides go up there anyway because you're, you're going to have an opening there on the side uh, for your ribbon. So whichever way you want to do it, it's your pattern. It's, it's perfectly fine. And then what I would do, just like we did with the um, canisters, is I'd kind of eyeball and see about how much of the front I would want on my bucket and on this one maybe five inches so I would measure not on the bottom five inches but along the top or approximately where I measured well this one I probably wanted a little bigger I probably want about seven inches so I kind of eyeball it on my pattern and I'd make a mark at about seven inches and then I would use this angle and fold it back over to my seven inch point. You see what I'm doing here? I'm folding that back. This was open. This was all open. I'm trying to create the front. I would fold this back for however big I wanted my front. I would draw a line and then I would cut it. And then I'd have a piece for my front and a piece for my back. Now that's going to go all the way around. If you want this to be a little bit with some open space, I would take probably one to two inches off of each side on the back, whatever was left over. You could fold the back in half, draw a line that's parallel to the line that you have here, and just fold out an inch or two. And, and trim it off and that would become your back panel then you could label it back and front so that you don't get confused which is which 
Start out with an embroidery de uh, that's design that you quilt around that's bigger than this piece that you made for your pattern. And then when you're done quilting your embroidery, you know, quilting around the embroidery or whatever you have, maybe just fabric, then cut it down to the pattern size. You don't need to add, again, seam allowances or anything like that because you're just going to have a binding around it and it's it's a lot of fun. So you can do buckets, you can do the straight up and down canisters. Um, both, both work equally well. Um, now, one thing I need to point out, if you're doing a bucket, the bottom is smaller than the top. So what's gonna happen when you lift your bucket? It's just gonna fall off. If you uh, have the, the bottom is smaller than the top, it's gonna just fall off. So since this is just a temporary thing and not a permanent thing, what I would do is I'd probably just get some double-sided sticky tape, put it right on the bucket, front and back, where the panels are, just to kind of secure it. You're going to have it tied, so it's not going to flop out and off. You just want to secure that so that the panel's not going to fall off when you lift your bucket. So if, um, if a child was taking this trick-or-treating, for example, you'd want that to be able to stay. So that's how to have some fun with the canisters and buckets. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and go over and see if we have some questions. <coughs> Sorry, I was feeling some coughing coming on. I still feel a tickle in my throat. <coughs> I tell you, the allergies right now... Ah, there's something in the air in Texas. <coughs> Sorry. Laura asked, can you run through the layers, please? Sure. Let's take off this little guy right here. I'm just going to untie him. I just had a, a regular back... I just made a quilt sandwich. So... I had a regular backing. Let me see if I can find something real quick here. I just had a regular backing fabric and I laid that down first. And then that's where I store my quilt batting uh, leftovers. And then I took a piece of batting and laid that down. It was just a scrap that I had. And then I tore away the uh, stabilizer from my pattern. I got that nice and ironed and pressed before I did the quilting. And then I layered... Let me get this stuff out of the way so you can actually see. <laughs> when you're working in small quarters, this happens. Okay. I hope you can see this. All right. So we have a layer of just a backing fabric and then a layer of batting and a layer of uh, your top panel. And I probably had it, well, no, I had it this way. And then you're going to hoop all of those or you can hand quilt all those, however you want to quilt it. Um, and then once you have that all quilted, you're gonna come over and cut it down to size to create your panel. I hope that answered your question um, that you were having about the, the layers. I hope that was the layers that you were talking about. Ah, I thought I lost him. He's over here. <laughs> okay. Laura said, Anna, that's a cute idea as a gift, a get well gift or whatever. I think it is. You could use this in any number of ways. It's the sky's the limit, however you want to decorate them up and whatever use you want to make them. I think with Christmas coming up and, and holidays or birthdays or like I mentioned before, a little gift basket, maybe you want a smaller jar. The same theory applies. You would just have smaller measurements. Um... Luana said, can you pull back the end product? I can't see and came in late. 
Um, I think you're talking about this. <laughs> this is the little canister cover. That's the front and that's the back. And you can change them up however you want. Let me see if I can pull this back so that you can see that better. And then we also did the um, little snow buddies for the front of this canister. I've untied him so he's off right now. But those are what we had. And both design sets, because I know I'll have people asking, are at our website at soinspiredbybonnie.com. Um, Joanne said, so cute, arrived late, and would like to see the jar with the panel on it. I hope you saw it. Thank you. There's the little uh, spooky buddy. I thought he'd be cute. He's filled with candy already for Halloween. Can you believe it's already Halloween time? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, Linda said, what became of the bucket? That I just went over uh, and covered uh, the bucket just a few minutes ago. So maybe on the replay you can see how I made a pattern for the bucket. I'll have replays available on the Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel and um, my Pinterest page. So we have uh, all our videos that I've done are on all three of those uh, social networks. So um, you can find us somewhere. We'll, I, I don't take those down. <laughs> Good, bad, or, or <laughs> they're all there. Um, Anna said that uh, she had mentioned a potted plant. Yes, that would be really cute to have a little potted plant uh, decorated up with a cute little end. Now you would do the potted plants probably the same way uh, we did the bucket pattern because a lot of potted plants are in that kind of a shape. So, you know, you would just roll it on freezer paper like I demonstrated before. Um, one idea just spawns another, doesn't it? It's just amazing how our minds can just we can keep thinking of new ideas on how to use these and uh, apply them for all kinds of uses I think we've got everybody's questions answered um, I'm just going to refresh my page just to make sure but I think we got everybody's questions answered if not, um, please go ahead and post your question. I do check on the um, post throughout the day and even sometimes weeks and months later, I'll try to keep up with them if someone had a question and get back and let you know uh, the answer to your question. Anna said, thanks Bonnie, this was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with these. The first, my prototype took me a little while. I didn't tuck the ribbons underneath my binding, so I had to hand stitch them on. Really, that didn't take a long time at all. But my second one went tons faster than the first one. So don't get discouraged if your first one takes a little bit of time as you're thinking through the process. But, oh my goodness, once you get going with these, there's, they really are fast and easy. Um, Laura said, thanks, Bonnie. Super cute project. I'm glad you liked it. Really, that's that's neat. I, You know, you, you make these things up and you're never sure if they're going to be received well or not. But I had a lot of fun and I was hoping you would too. Well, I think we've answered everybody's questions again. If you've missed the live segment, we'll be on, um, we'll have the replay available almost instantly as soon as we sign off here on Facebook. We'll repost the replays over on YouTube and Pinterest. So they'll be available for you to uh, view anytime there if you want to make this project later and need a, a, a refresher course or whatever. Um, be sure to uh, send in your glitter, or not your glitter flex tips, be sure to send in your best favorite tips for uh, your sewing. And if I use your tip, uh, in my Tuesday's tips, I will send you five 
half sheets of glitter flex uh, for you sharing your tips with me and my using them so be sure to send in those tips because you might get some glitter flex out of the deal um, I want to thank everybody for coming I know everybody's really busy we're gearing up to uh, do our holiday sewing I know you're all really busy so I want to take this time to thank you for showing up in my little corner of the world and I would love to see your projects if you make some canisters until next Tuesday bye bye for now